श्री यतिराजाय विवेकानंद सुरै सचित सुख स्वरूपाय स्वामी ने तपहर ने कोई बाव जाओ तो स्वामी विवेकानंद हु इज द किंग अमंग द योगीज हु इज द हीरो अमंग ह्यूमन बींग्स हु इज द एम्बॉडीमेंट ऑफ एग्जिस्टेंस नॉलेज प्लीज एब्सोल्यूट वो पाव जाओ तो स्वामी जी गए न जगे ओम शांति ही शांति ही शांति ही पीस 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 में पूर्व Friends, I am very happy to come and to attain this Fourth of July function after thirty-eight years. <laughs> But as some of you know, I was here as an assistant minister from 1971 to 78. Then I was transferred to St. Louis to assist Swami Shat Prakashananda, who met Swami Bibi Kananda. Three times in Dhaka in 1901, when I was the age of 12. Every year there is a Fourth of July function in Saint Louis, but we could not have last two years because there is a big construction and remodeling work going on under the arch in Saint Louis. The Fourth of July function of the city is now held in front of our park. in front of our ashrama we cannot park any car so i am here shami <laughs> sarbo <laughs> devananda asked me first to speak something about swami ji because this is 4th of july i wrote an article i shall never see 40 Swami Vivekananda is a wonder to me. His life is very short. Thirty-nine years, five months, twenty-four days. But his message is very long. <laughs> He said, "I have given enough. Fifteen hundred years to thinking humanity." Swami is really a wonder. Though it is called Ram Krishna Monastery, but the presiding deity of Swami of this monastery is Swami Ji. You can see. I shall tell you the last day what happened in Devi Kanda's life, Fourth of July. He went to Amar Nath and Lord Shiva. Give him a boon, it shall be to. Death is under his palm. Whenever he wants to die, he will die. Sri Ram Krishna predicted the day he will know about himself, he will give up his body. So, Swami Ji was preparing for his final departure. My, I have a message to the West as Buddha has a message to the East. His message was Vedanta. Five years, the best period of his life he gave to the Western world. He was preparing himself. On the fourth of July, he got up, went to the shrine at four o'clock, meditated till six, had breakfast at six o'clock. He was making jokes and talking to his brother disciples. Then all of a sudden, very unusual, he again went to the shrine at eight thirty. Till nine thirty, he meditated again in the shrine, <coughs> old shrine of Belur Mart. At that time, new temple was not built. When Premananda came to perform the ritual in the shrine, he told him, "Take my ashana in the Sri Ram Krishna's bedroom." Those we have seen our old shrine. There is a bag. There is another small room where we put the Lord to bed. There he went, closed the door, and went out. And meditated till eleven o'clock. 
and Premanand overheard what he was he was singing. Kali Maki Amar Kalore, Rit Poddo Kore Alore. Is my mother Kali black? She illumines my heart. Then she opened the door. Then Premanandha saw he was dusting Sri Ramakrishna's bed. Eleven o'clock, came down. He was walk, pacing in the courtyard and said, if there are another Vivekananda, then that Vivekananda would know this Vivekananda had done. Premanandha overheard. Then he sat under the mango tree and in the veranda, western veranda of the monk's building. There, he was talking about a verse from the Rig Veda. Sorry, Yajur Veda, Krish Shukla Yajur Veda. Shushumna Su Varchasa. After reciting that verse, he was asking Swami Shuddhananda, his disciple, could you bring that book from the library? He read it. This is Mohidhar Vashya. He did not like it. No. He distorted the commentary. You see, Shushumna Su Varchasa. Shushumna channel through which yogi gives up the body. So these things should be, it is in the tantric, these things in the Vedas also. Then in the meantime, Ramakrishnananda's father came and said, hey, tomorrow we shall perform the Kali Puja here. And he asked his disciples, prepare everything. I'm talking about 11 o'clock, 11, 11.30. Lunch was ready at 12 o'clock. That day they got a good shad fish from the Ganges. <laughs> Swamiji had a nice meal. He felt very relaxed, very good physical condition. 12, 12.30. He went to take a little rest. Didn't get rest. He got up, asked Premananda and all the monks, come to my room. I shall give a class. My he, I have a little headache today. Plus I meditated too much. All monks came to his room. He gave a class on Sanskrit grammar for three hours. <laughs> and explaining, making joke. Making jokes and all those things, you know. <laughs> making jokes and make the thing interesting. He said, when as a boy I taught the whole European history in one night to my friend. Do you know what was his power? He can read and can absorb and can explain and put it into a simple language. So, four. One, two, four, class. Then he was asking he drank a glass of water, a cup of milk. At five o'clock, he went for walk. He went to, up to Belud Bajar with his brother monks. Then seeing a garden, he said, you know, in America, do you know what do they do? I saw in Ridgely Manor, Mr. Leggett's big, that nearly a thousand acres. How they mow the lawn with the machine, one man can take care of vast land. We do not have that kind of machine in this country. <laughs> then he came back. Then he talked about, you know, we shall start a Vedu Vidyalaya, a Vedic school. Primananda said, what good will it do to us? It will destroy our superstitions. <laughs> that Vedu Vidyalaya now came into existence. Anyhow, then, He sat under the mango tree, uh, still that tree is there in the courtyard of Balloon Mart, on a bench. It was 6.30. He saw the monks are drinking tea. He asked, would you give me a cup of tea? So they gave him a cup of tea. He would drink tea. So 
seven o'clock. In July, our best part starts at seven o'clock when the sun goes down. So, after drinking the tea, he was going upstairs to his room. From monastery, those who know how to go to Swamiji's room from inside. Swami Bodhananda, who came later to 1910, I think, he came to New York, he died in 1950. He was Swamiji's private secretary and cook. Swamiji was asking, he was going up to second steps. He was telling, asking, hey, how much money do I have in my wallet? So I mean, mm, maybe four or five rupees. Four or five rupees, yes. You know, the other day I went to a monk's room, his mosquito curtain is torn. And the mosquito bite will bring a malaria. Please buy mosquito curtain with that money. This man is going to die within two hours. He already selected the day, 4th of July. He put a page mark there on the almanac, the day he selected to depart from this world. This man is going to, going to die within two hours, thinking of a mosquito curtain of a monk. You see, Swamiji told in San Francisco in 1900, Madam, I will have to be born again. Why? I fell in love with human beings. Ami Manuj Balabashi. I will have to be born again. He is an incarnation of Nora. Great sage Nora. So, saying so, he went to his room. He asked his attendant, Brajendra, Hey! Bring my rosary. He started to repeat his mantra. After one hour, eight o'clock, he lay down on the floor, cement floor. Fan me. So he was fanny. Meanwhile, he was telling his attention Let me be alone. Vivekananda gave so many messages. Nine volumes of complete words, his life, your reminiscences, huge, 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 his literature. It is really a wonder. That man came on the platform at the age of 30, died at the age of 39. In between two years, he was very sick. He already, he only worked 27 years. See his contribution. And what was his last message? Wait and meditate till I call you. Those are the few words came from the lips of Swami Vivekananda. Wait and meditate till I call you. It was 9-10, Swami Vivekananda passed away. He gave up his body through quite healthy, whole day he was in good health. Through his willpower, through his yogic process, he gave up his body. I recently found something very interesting. He was planning to die, Swami Brahmananda knew. So, Brahmananda and Swami Sharadananda was trying to bring his mind down to the worldly plane, bringing more work, bringing more problems, so that his mind will come down. <laughs> <laughs> then, he, do you know what did he do? He knew these two people. It is hard for me to die in front of these two people. These two people have bound me with their love. So, I must cut that cord of love. 
he asked Brahmananda, go. Go to Calcutta, have some work. She sent, he sent Sharadananda also. Only among the Jari disciples, two were there. Swami Advaitananda and Swami Premananda. So that was Swamiji. Very amazing person. Really amazing person. What is its contribution? If somebody asks what is the best contribution of Swamiji to the West, his four yogas. Karma Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, Raja Yoga and Gana Yoga. He made that manuals for the Western world, not only that, whole world. So that you may never, never get confused what is religion, how to practice it. And the goal of human life is to realize God, that is demonstrated. That was Swamiji. That was my 4th of July talk about Swamiji. Now I shall tell you my days in Shubhuko because they gave me time only half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I came to Trubuko 1st July 1971 with Swami Prabhupananda. I remember with those four rooms of that Viveka Brahmananda cottage. First room was Swami Prabhupananda, next Ashaktananda, next my room, next is Swami Pavitrananda. This, when I first came, I fell in love with this place. If somebody says that, what place do you want to stay in your whole life? I eat Trubuka Monastery. Why? I gave the name, it is a Maya free zone. <laughs> when I entered the monastery, Gana is here, he used to sometimes my chauffeur. When I used to enter, goodbye civilization. <laughs> that is the way I used to raise my hands. This Trubuko, you believe it or not, those who stay at night, they see, there is a spiritual current in this place. First I shall tell you about the shrine. That shrine was very deep. And it was dark carpet. Many people fell. <laughs> deep means, you know, my breast deep. You can think of that. Then the brothers raised that level. And now it is a little higher. Then we removed that business vice president, Mr. Hens, selected that carpet. Well, that carpet, millions of people walked in the Disneyland. It is own, not old now. It is a beautiful carpet. <laughs> I'm telling you the history of the shrine. That shrine, I recorded my chanting, Echoes of the Eternal, Breath of the Eternal, six hours. I love that echo. And that shrine, there is something, I put it there, I shall not tell you. <laughs> That I shall not tell. <laughs> First year, I think Swami Prabhupada gave Brahmacharya eight American Brahmacharis. I wrote their name: Bhuma Chaitanya, he is here; Atma Chaitanya, he is here; Vedu Chaitanya, Avedu Chaitanya, Shat Chaitanya, Turiya Chaitanya, Shiva Chaitanya, Nitya Chaitanya. <laughs> But I had a tremendous problem to put dhotis around Shiva's waist. <laughs> I had to tie with a rope. <laughs> Shiva is Shiva. <laughs> this Trubuko. El Toro, only there are two shops. One bond market, one seven drug store, and one gas station. Gasoline, 24 cents per gallon. <laughs> we used to buy gasoline, 18 cents per gallon, because we used to buy 300 gallons a year. This place, we had only $500 annual tax. I'm talking about 71. In 73, it became 14,500. 
we cannot afford. So, what to do? We had to go with this county, Orange County, for easement. 250 acres we gave to the O'Neill Park, and 50 acres we preserved, and then built this walking shrine trail so that we are tax exempt. Tadatman on the build all those things, and our Shat Chaitanya built that American Indian shrine. My our brothers worked very hard for this place to maintain the sanctity and purity and atmosphere of this place. There was no county water. We have a deep tube well below. We have a cows. We used to get some money. They used to graze this area. And the top of the hill, we used to go there. At that time, no vision mayo, no lizard world. We can sometimes see the ocean. It is a beautiful place. When we used to come from El Toro, it is a two-lane road, both sides, orange grove, beautiful blossoms, beautiful fragrance, all are gone. <laughs> then the road, which is DJ, we are right, I think we got the news, the general heard, the person who built this whole monastery died. Perhaps you remember, it is his idea that in the Medieval period, the Christian monarch monks, how they lead the life, life and prayer. That, that is the way, this is very rugged buildings, do you see? It is all that Gerald Hart's ideas. He gave everything to Vedanta Society of Southern California. We got the 300 acres free. Same thing, Santa Barbara. Kellogg's property came to Vedanta Society. So, <laughs> It is very, very important. Then, my days here was very happy. Do you know why happy? I love to work here. I remember at that time, hippie movement was on. Many hippies would come to <laughs> for meditation. So I used to tell them, do you have American independence? Do you know what is American independence? A job, an apartment, a car, and phone. <laughs> if, if you have this four, you have American independence, and now come and meditate with us. <laughs> <laughs> and Prabhupada and the Shami, really, the, some of the hippies now are the, the best lovers and devotees of Sri Ramakrishna and Vedanta, I tell you frankly. They change, their lives are changed and transformed. I shall not tell their names. Some are, uh, some are here. <laughs> some, some are here. <laughs> we used to play badminton. We had aqua ball in the water. We used to play. I have a Vedanta challenge, uh, challenge Cup. I defeated the two good boys. In the, in the badminton and took the cup to St. Louis. <laughs> if they want to defeat me, they can bring back the <laughs> my cup. <laughs> One of our problems in the monastery, El Toro Marine Base. That's F-16, those jets, or whoo, they make so much, uh, they will fly over our monastery. <laughs> Terrible noise. That Cook's Corner is still there, Slybo Canyon is there. Brothers would go and pick up mail once a day to the post office. And there was a gossip queen there in that post office. <laughs> she used to tell what is going on in the whole canyon. <laughs> the brothers built that cottage. Another beautiful thing in Trubuka, I, as I said, that you know why I wanted to stay whole life in Trubuka. Library. Beautiful library. Many books are there. I'm a book lover. <laughs> library. And Tadatman on the Spanke. That is very I mean, famous. Very thin, but it is so tasty. <laughs> Mm 
I remember many hippies would come and ask for meditation. I said, do you want my meditation? I shall, I can, probably used to give initiation. Head Swami can give initiation. Assistant Swami cannot. <laughs> so I came to Trubuko and I typed that book, Meditation and Its Methods. That is my hippie book. <laughs> <laughs> it has been translated into German, Spanish, um, Many languages that book has been published. I think 30 editions in, other, in India. <laughs> Vedanta Press published that book. Methods of Knowledge. Christopher Richard wrote the foreword. When I used to come to book at night time, I did not want to sleep. It is a great place to practice sadhana. But coyote would come at night and rub his face on my glass window <laughs> outside. <laughs> Coyote, deer, some wild animals are here. Yeah. Mountain lion. One man who was very, very great friend of the society, bought the pride. He was the president of the society. It is his Intelligence brought county water to the city, water to our monastery free. He did a lot of work. Then our Charlie and our Bill, they tried to protect the society from these matchboxes which are around now, you see. The bomb buildings, houses, houses. We want to preserve this, this isolation, this solitude, sanctity of the monastery. Those people were very hard, hot, hot, hot with these builders. I really, really appreciate them. <laughs> One story I must tell you. We are then building this Hollywood convent. That rooms in previously monastery was where the convent is, and the, where the convent the monastery moved here, and convent moved there in 1974, 75, 75. So when we are building that convent, and with the living room and the kitchen which you see at present, three hundred thirty thousand dollars. Now it may be million. Do you know what happened? In front of this Trubuka monastery, there are 13 acres belong to the monastery in the life of Canyon Road. The county wanted that property. But we want to extend the O'Neill Park. And Ananda Prana came to me and said, Swami, we, we need money for the convent construction and this and that. And Swami Prabhupada said, yes, we, we need that money. Then I was in Santa Barbara. Our Asim called me, Swami, Wednesday is the board meeting. Swami already agreed to sell that property to the city, to the county. We do not want, but Swami won't listen to us. Perhaps he may listen to you. Swami Prabhupada loved me like his own son. So I was in Santa Barbara, came back Monday morning, I went to his room, Maharaj, I hear that you want to sell that property? Well, yes, 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 we need money. I tell him, Maharaj, if you open your lips, thousands and thousands of dollars will come. But Michael Berry, who was the secretary of General Hart, he will give money, the money with him. Do you know how much city of, uh, county offered? $5,000 per acre. So they offered only $67,000 13 acres of land. I can Maharaj, $67,000 you will give to 13 acres? Then I put a little fear in his mind. <laughs> I can Maharaj, do you know what will happen? What will happen? Oh, O'Neill Park people will exchange the, their entrance here and they will build overnight camping, they will build bathroom, all these things. And the American girls, when they go to the jungle, 
and they park, they have very little dress, your monks will go and see them. <laughs> That worked as a magic. <laughs> I, I, I just scared him. The Swami Maharaj, American girls, you know. <laughs> In front of me, immediately he... Amahananda! We do not want to sell that property. <laughs> Who put the same restrictions as they did in 250 acres? Bas, whole thing changed. <laughs> but do you know what? God helped us. The person who invented the Xerox, his wife came, Dorothy, and came with her secretary, Catherine. Swami, you want to build Conway? $100,000. Another, like that. All money came. But one nice thing if I have done for the Trubuko, I want this entrance of the Trubuko Monastery. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, it would be extension of the Unil Park, overnight camping, parking, <laughs> bathroom, all these things. <laughs> When I was here, I used to give classes to my brothers. You know, was in Santa Barbara, in Trubuco, in Hollywood, I taught the nuns, chanting, my class, whatever I learned, I loved to share. And I think I did my work very well, I part my work. <coughs> here, I, as I said, I did, one day I was teasing Shai Prabhupada and the Maharaj, is Sarman and the Mount, according to Vedanta, it is something new. We do not have that kind of book in our literature in Bengali. You translate it. So I translated that book, sitting in Trubuka Monastery. I worked on Lach Swami Adbhutananda teachings and reminiscences, sitting in the monastery. So anyhow, I did a lot of work here, as I tell you. I love this place. And in 1984, well, in 1993, a desire came. We are working in this world, in this country, 100 years. And how Swamiji met the top people of American people, society. So I remember in 1984, I took this photograph of the Swamiji's face, my love for Swamiji. Melvin Hoffman, he met Swamiji. He met this this bronze statue for New York, Portland, and it is in Thousand Island Park, and here. I think four, so far as I know, we met these things. So, this book we produced, spending $50,000 to show Swamiji's contribution to this, to this Western world. Anyhow, I had five copies books. I brought it here. If anybody wants to have, you can have them. I can give the autograph. So I shall not take any time because their program will start. I just told you in brief, I have so many memories about this place. And we have, a, we have some, there we have a persimmon tree. There is a pomegranate tree. And 2,200 2, gallons of water we always keep reserved there to protect the monastery from water, from fire. Once fire came here, Turiyo fought with the host and stopped fire. The monastery was about to be burned. Fire came from that direction. And Santa and a crazy wind was trying to destroy our place. The brothers really, really worked hard. These people, it came by the American young people and preserved this. And I still some of my our brothers are working and saving this place, and I request all of you, please help this place. Thank you very much.